everybody so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, some of the arcs that I received so okay this is very late in the month for what I'm doing but I'm gonna do the first chapter of arcs that I received um, that are published in August so yes I know it's the end of August but the next one will be sooner and then I'll just make them sooner until they're at a normal time to post these um, but as you know I only joined the YouTube, the booktube community, um, a week or two weeks ago, um, I believe now. So I haven't had a chance to upload this and I've been working on it and I read the first chapters of all of my August arcs. So now I'm going to let you guys know, um, my thoughts on the first chapters of all of them and what the books are. I'm going to go in order of the release date. So I'm going to start off with the ones that were published first and then move my way towards the ones and I believe I've got one or two that aren't published quite yet. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So I'm just going to start right off um, with this one here. So we've got right here, it is How the Light Gets In. And it is by Katie Upperman. So um, this book is um, about a girl whose sister died. Um, and she's not doing as well uh, in school or just mentally um, and her parents are well okay her dad is kind of fed up with her not doing well and decides to give her an ultimatum of she can choose between going to two different places um, for the summer and she has to decide between them and basically that's all that happened in the first chapter. <laughs> Um, so for this one, um, I gave it four stars for the first chapter because it's an interesting idea, but I can't really get a feel for what the plot's going to be yet. Um, she seemed to be making a decision on where she wanted to go by the first chapter. Um, but other than that, like, I can't really tell where they're going with this other than it's going to be some sort of a, um, what do you call it, like an emotional um, journey is what it seems like, like some sort of like emotional healing probably going to be what the plot is, but I don't really understand where it's taking place, what's what's going on with it, which is why I docked it a star because I was like, I don't really understand anything of what's going on, but in a way that might have helped the book out because I might not have really liked where it was going, so I don't know. We'll see um, what I think about it when I read more of it, but it's not at the top of my list right now of books to get to. There's a couple of other arcs that I read that I am liking a whole lot more than this one. Um, so this one came out on August 6th. And like I said, four stars. It's not bad. It's just not the best one that I read. So it's kind of like middle of the line. And I'll just like stack it over here, I guess. Um, and the publisher for that one is Swoon Reads, if anyone cares, uh, who the publishers are for these books. I'll try to mention it if I have it written down. So the next one I'm going to talk about actually is one of, uh, my digital arcs. It's, um, House of Salt and Sorrows. So I actually got a physical finished copy of that one recently. Um, but, um, I was reading my digital copy and I don't know where I put my physical book right now. So I'm just going to talk about it without holding the book up. Um, so this one I rated five stars. I loved the first chapter. It's amazing. And I knew I was going to love it anyways. Like there's sometimes you just know that a book is going to be one of your favorites. And I just knew. <laughs> so this one is by Erin A. Craig and it came out on August 6th. Um, so for this one... It's a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses, and it has some amazing storytelling, and it the first chapter was mostly just like a build-up to the main content of the book. So it's like setting up the idea that um, the family could be like cursed, and it was just a really interesting twist on the classic tale of the 12 sisters. So in this one, the, not all 12 of the sisters are alive anymore. Uh, which I had never seen anyone do with a retail. Not that there's that many retellings of this story, but I've never heard of anybody going that direction with it. So I thought that was really, really interesting. And honestly, like the way the culture is set up for these people um, in the story is a really interesting culture. Like the way that they, um, their relationship that they have with the ocean, maybe is a good way to word it. Um, so definitely check that one out because this one was one of my favorites. Um, 
yeah, so, okay, I'll move on to the next one, though, because we've got a few to get through. I think I've got 12 arcs total, 12 or 13, something like that. All right, so the next one right here is um, Iron Magicians, and this is by, um, it looks like Citrix in Uau, maybe? Their names are right here. But as we all know, I'm terrible with pronouncing names. So um, if it's not one I've heard out loud before or can like guess at really well, then uh, I just know I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> so this one I rated four stars. Um, it's a really interesting format. It came out on August 6th. So this one right here is actually, as a, I don't know if you can kind of like tell from the top that it's different, but it is a graphic novel. So I'll like give you like a little peek at like what the art style looks like. Um, I always like to show people the art style because that for me is a huge decision making. Like it's an important part of the decision making process of whether I buy a graphic novel is what the art style is. And this one it is definitely right up my alley. It's like, I don't know. Let's see. We'll find the first page. Okay, first page. So you can see what the first page of it looks like. So it's just very beautiful, kind of classic style, very clean, crisp um, lines, and I really like that. So it is a choose your own adventure graphic novel though. Um, and it's a steampunk, like 19th century Paris magic, like story. And it's kind of got a mystery element, I feel like as well. Basically, it's it's just such a weird format is why I adopted a star. Not because of the choose your own adventure element, but because you have to, it's not just choose your own adventure, you have to hunt for this next page that you go to, which is really weird. And I've never seen anybody do that before. So basically, let me find, there's a sample one that they put in the front where it shows you a sample of what it will look like in the story. Let's see, where is the first one? Um, if I can find it in here. Oh, here we go. So right here you can see, um, I don't know if you can tell in that bottom page, there is the numbers. Oops, I closed the page on you. Okay. See the two numbers that are circled? Those, you have to hunt for the numbers on each of these pages in this book. So that's how you know what page to go to next is you find the number and then you choose which one of the two numbers you'd like to go to. Um, usually it's just two numbers, but sometimes there's three numbers and it's just like, it's just really odd. Like I don't, I haven't gotten too deep into it because this one I couldn't just read a first chapter because as I'm sure you know, choose your own adventure stories don't really have chapters. Um, you're just kind of like flying blind. So I read about 10 pages, which is usually what a one chapter is in most of these books. Um, I looked at several of them to see if that was accurate and it was for all the other ones. It's around 10, sometimes less, sometimes more, but around 10. And um, yeah, it was just weird and I haven't really gotten too deep into what's happening. I was still in the like setting up stage. Uh, but there were some interesting aspects, like there was like a thing that they want you to cut out in the back. There's character cards you're supposed to cut out. It's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons combined with a choose your own adventure story combined with a graphic novel. So if that's something you're really interested in doing, um, definitely check this book out. Um, it's a lesser known book. Uh, who's the publisher? Quirk. It's by Quirk. Um, and yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's just... I don't know if I'm willing to put in that much work. Like the character card is a little bit much. Like, let me see if I can find it to show you. Um, yeah. So you're supposed to catalog all of your items and the you're supposed to like win when you've gotten a certain number of um, a certain item. So yeah, that's definitely just a really interesting concept. And I was definitely intrigued to read about it, but um, I'm not sure if that concept is quite for me, but I'm definitely going to continue reading it and keep giving it a chance because it's not like it's, it's a, I mean, gra it's a graphic novel. They're quick reads typically. So it's not like I'm dedicating a massive portion of time to reading this book, even if it's not for me. So there's that. So then the next book, um, this one also came out August 6th, is uh, Dear Justice League. Um, so this one is, I mean, this was another one that was difficult to find the one chapter mark, uh, because graphic novel, um, and here, let me show you the first page of art. 
So it's a very classic style, but it's not totally classic. It looks more modernized than what like the original, like older style comic books would be or graphic novels. Um, but it has the Justice League in it. Um, it seems like each chapter might focus on a different character and be a different um, like insecurity maybe that uh, uh, somebody has written to the Justice League about. So uh, the first chapter was Superman's chapter and it was about um, if he's ever made a mistake. And then it looked like the next chapter was about a different character. I don't remember who was the next one, but there was another one that was next. That's how I knew to end because I was like, oh, I think that this is a, the end of a chapter because it's a whole new person and a whole new text message. It's through text message, which is weird. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea. I gave it four stars. Um, it's cute. It's intended for a younger audience than myself. So... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm enjoying it, but like I said, four stars just because it's doesn't it's just interesting. It doesn't read like a traditional comic book either, I guess. Or graphic novel. I mean it's a graphic novel, but the characters originated from comic books, which is why I keep calling it that. <laughs> so then I'll just move on to the next one. Um, because I've got a lot of these, like I said, so I gotta move through them kind of quickly. So here there are monsters, and this is was by um Amalinda Barubi, and I don't think I said who the person who wrote this other one was, but um, Dear Justice League is illustrated by Gustavo Duarte, and it is by Michael Northrup, in case that's something that you're interested in, um, and the publisher is DC Zoom for that one. This one's publisher is Sourcebooks Fire, yeah. Um, so I gave this one four stars. It's more of a, like... I, I thought it was going to be a lot more like horror thriller style, but it hasn't gotten into that aspect yet. Um, so basically her sister seems to have disappeared. So this was another like sister story. And the first chapter is just about the sister is missing and they don't know where she is. And that was pretty much all that happened in the first chapter. So not a whole lot of action, not a whole lot to go on, but it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't an interesting enough concept in the beginning for me, so that's why I gave it four stars instead of five, uh, because there was nothing really wrong with it other than it just wasn't interesting enough for me. Like, there was no hook, and for me, I need to have something to, like, really sink into to give it five stars um, when, I mean, I'm only reading one chapter. There wasn't a whole lot that happened in the first chapter. So I'm thinking if there are people who go out there and they only, they just read the first chapter of a book to see if they want to buy it, I don't know that they'd be convinced to buy it <laughs> from that alone. So yeah, that was basically just my main reasoning. If you're really interested in um, in stories about like missing people and stuff, that might be more up your alley than it is at mine. But honestly, this is not really my genre <laughs> anyways. So it was a stretch for me to go for it. And it just wasn't, I mean, I will read it. It's not like I'm not going to read it just because I gave it four stars. Four stars is still a good rating, um, but it's just not going to be at the top of my list of books to go to. Definitely going to go for House of Salt and Sorrows first. So then the next book um, we've got here is uh, Beast of the Frozen Sun, and this one is by Jill Criswell. And I gave this one four stars. It comes came out on August 6th. Um, we're still in the August 6th <laughs> zone. I got a lot of books that came out August 6th, which is part of the reason why, oh my goodness, I got so many books that came out in uh, July, August, September, and October that I was just overwhelmed, which is why I'm just getting to these books now. Um, and so yeah, this it's going to be crazy for a little while for me, but I'm going, I'm trying to be more on top of things and stop being a procrastinator. So um, I already started on my September ones too, reading the first chapter so I can do another one of these videos for you. But anyways, this book is, um, in the first chapter, it was really weird. It was too many, okay, it was, it's very, very fantasy. If you like fantasy and, like, intense fantasy, maybe, like, if you like Lord of the Rings type of fantasy, this is kind of what it felt like. It felt like an epic, like, saga, but almost too con complex for me, maybe. I look for lighter fantasy, maybe, is a way to word it, or, um... 
I don't know the the words the words that they choose I think is the biggest thing for me this is why I docked it a star I gave it four stars because the words are all like really complex sounding um I don't know let me see if I can find like I did enjoy it it's just it's from the point of view of one character and I read the prologue and chapter one because there were two different not all the books just had one chapter they some of them had the prologue before like um the guy's name is like there are there's spelled name weird names there's like countries and stuff. it just felt like I was having to remember a lot of information and that's not quite my thing there was more than one point of view that was going on and it was just a little confusing so I just felt confused at the end of chapter one which is why I gave it four instead of five but it was still an interesting concept which is why I didn't dock it another star normally if a book really confuses me I might give it a worse rating than four, uh, which just speaks to how, what a great concept the book was. Um, so I, I guess I should probably explain the concept. The concept is that, um, here, let me say, um, it's a, the pre, the, what was it called? Uh, the first part was from a guy's point of view. I won't try to pronounce his name because I will definitely butcher it. Um, okay maybe Riker maybe that's how you say it <laughs> so the first chap the first not chapter the first part is from his point of view and he's talking about like how he's part of some organization that goes around killing people um it's like war war zone um I don't know this like it's like a very conquering kind of situation it sounds like and then it goes to the point of a girl and it's talking about how um, she just wants more. It seems like it might go like a little bit feminist, but n I'm not sure how feminist it will go. I don't think it will go like full out because it seems like she's being told she can't do things because she's a woman and that she's going to probably break free of that. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I've got for you with this one. Um, yeah. So then the next one I read, um, this one is Boss Up, and it is by Lindsay Teague Moreno. Um, and it says on the front, this ain't your mama's business book. So this one is a nonfiction. I think it's the only nonfiction that, yeah, it's the only nonfiction that I've got in my stack. This one came out on August 6th, and I gave this one three stars. Um, this one is about a, basically she's just talking about being an entrepreneur, being a mom, and... I don't believe on the back does it talk about being a mom well I guess it does a little bit but I didn't realize that it, I thought it was mostly just gonna be talking about motivational stuff but it was a lot about the whole first chapter is about being a mom and I'm not a mom so I it, there's just an immediate disconnect there for me uh, but it was also religious which I was not expecting either and I'm not like I don't want to read a religious book nothing against them they're just not for me um, so that's why I gave it three stars because it was not what I was expecting. And I don't believe there's nothing in the back that says anything about it being religious. And she repeatedly references God. And so I feel like that's something she probably should have mentioned because that changes her target audience slightly. And I feel like she should have mentioned just how much she's highlighting the mom part of the book because that also changes their target audience um so yeah it just I found out it was not like a me kind of book I'm probably going to continue reading it anyways but I definitely uh, it's just, just not for me I'm probably not going to love this book <laughs> but I don't know because with nonfictions, the chapters are j typically different sections so I'm sure since I finished the mom chapter it's probably going to be a subject that hopefully is going to be more up my alley next which is why I'm willing to continue going with this book hoping it will become more a book that I'm going to personally enjoy um oh actually that's not the next book so the next book is actually a hundred days of sunlight and that's by Abby Emmons that one came out on August 7th, which I know is very odd. Um, the reason why I'm saying it's odd, for those of you that don't know, is books always come out on Tuesdays. And as you've noticed, all these other books came out on the 6th. So this book coming out on the 7th is just, it's a massive outlier. Like, that doesn't happen. But I'm thinking it might be because it's a self-published book. Um, this was another one of my digital copies. Um, I only got two digital arcs for August, or at least two that I'm talking about in this video. Um, so, I gave it three stars. I did not love it. Um, 
So the concept of the story is that um, the main character became blind in a car accident and um, she was in the accident with one of her grandparents and the grandparents um, hire somebody to help her begin writing again because she was a blogger and she hasn't been trying to blog at all since the accident. Um, I believe it's been about a month since the car accident and she they are saying she might regain her eyesight but they're not sure if it will happen. So she's been counting down to the day that they said she would probably regain it if she was going to regain it. Um, so that's kind of all she really talks about. It hasn't. They haven't hired anybody yet um, at this point, but they've introduced the idea that they're going to. Um, the reason why I gave it three stars is because the main character is really, really whiny. Like, it's really frustrating. And I understand. Um, it just... I understand that it's the situation that she's in. Um, is one that would be very upsetting but at the same time she's acting like it's like the first day that she's known and it's been several like it's it's been about a month I believe I think it's 21 days something like that um, and she's just very very whiny um, and kind of rude to other people like she's just taking it out on everybody else and I just am not into that even if it's realistic the way that she's behaving I just don't like it um so it's just not really I don't like her personality at the moment I'm hoping it will improve as the book goes on but right now I'm just like not into it um and yeah, I just didn't really like the I liked the idea but I'm not loving the execution so in my mind, the book would have been a five star for me, but then the main character was just so whiny and ungrateful and rude to everybody around her that I was like, eh, like I'm just not feeling this. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I'm feeling about that one there. It's definitely moved its way like down my TBR um, because of this, but hopefully the next chapter will be better. Um, I'm definitely going to continue reading it. I'm really, really interested in reading books uh, from a blind perspective. So I'm hoping that I like this book more. And it's got a really great rating on Goodreads. I looked to see what it was looking like online. And this is one of the few ones. Well, um, the, the Boss Up one actually was another one where the ratings online didn't match what I personally felt. Um, but that's probably because the people that are reading it are typically the people who are the target audience, and I am clearly not. <laughs> um, so this one has a really great rating online, and it has a lot of ratings. So that one kind of like confused me as to why there was such a disparity, but maybe because the book gets a lot better, maybe the character gets more likable and is not like a whiny brat. <laughs> so I don't know let's see we'll see how that one goes I'll let you guys I'll keep you updated uh when I continue reading that one so then the next book I read is um The Surface Breaks and it's by Louise O'Neill and this is a Little Mermaid retelling so this one came out August 13th and I gave it four stars um and I believe one of these books uh, it's possible it's this one it might not even be one from this stack um one of them was republished so the date that I have for it is the date that the version that I've got is being published. But I know one of my arcs, somebody mentioned to me that one of my arcs actually is not, it's a book that already came out a while back and they're republishing it again. So it might be this one. I, I think it was one of my mermaid ones. So I don't know which book it was, but it's possibly this one. <laughs> I'll let you know when there's another one that pops up that I think it might be. But definitely check out if this was one you're interested in. It might have, it might be the one that's republished. Anyways, I gave this one four stars. Um, and it is, like I said, a Little Mermaid retelling. Um, and it's about a girl, I mean, you know the story of the Little Mermaid. It didn't seem like there was much of a twist yet. Um, yeah, so I don't really know where it's going. Other than, oh, the, there was a slight difference in that the mom doesn't isn't necessarily dead in this one. Um, there is a little bit of an argument over whether or not the mom is dead in the first chapter. Um, in the little traditional Little Mermaid, the mom is dead. In this one, the mom is taken. So the humans have taken the mermaid mom. Um, and they're not sure. Everybody else says that the mom is dead. And the Little Mermaid argue she is not dead. <laughs> she thinks her mom is still alive. Um, other than that, it's seeming to be really similar to the 
traditional tale. Um, there is a grandmother mentioned, and I don't remember a grandmother in the original tale either. But yeah, other than that, there's not that much for me to say about it. Um, what did I say I gave it? Four stars? Yeah, four stars. I put sticky notes on the back of the books with what my star rating was for it. Um, so just so I would remember what I thought of the book. <laughs> and sometimes with like different notes about the book. Um, yeah. So uh, it was good. I don't remember why I docked it a star. Um, other than like it just didn't seem very unique from the original tale. So this one is The Doll Factory. Uh, it is by Elizabeth McNeil. And it came out on August 13th. I gave it four stars. Um, it is a very creepy book. Uh, I think I mentioned before that creepy is not really my thing. I am more of like a fantasy contemporary with like a splash of sci-fi kind of person. Um, and some nonfiction. This, so I don't really go for like horror thriller typically. Um, so I do have a couple of horror thriller arcs, not many at all because I know it's not really normally my thing, but I grabbed a couple because it's always nice to like try things even if you don't know if you're going to like them. It's good to give them a chance. So this one I gave a chance to and um, I gave it four stars which is really good for me from this sort of genre. Uh, there was nothing really to, there wasn't a whole lot to go off of other than like there's two different creepy characters. This is another one where it had two points of view which is weird. Like you would think that I don't know, you don't always get books where it's two points of view when you've just read one chapter. <laughs> but it had one of those, um, the pre, uh, the, what do you call it, the parts ahead. But it's weird because they're not labeled like a normal chapter. It's labeled, like it doesn't say, it's just like part one and like the boy. And I don't know, it doesn't have numbers. It doesn't have traditional things. So yeah, I read... I don't know, maybe more than one chapter. It felt like a chapter to me, uh, but it's two sections. But the first section was so short that it didn't really feel like it was a full chapter. So anyways, um, one of the sections was about a um, creepy doll lady. Um, and the other section was about a um, creepy guy who wants to, like, stuff weird animals. Um... And yeah, that's that's basically it. If that's something that you're interested in, I don't really understand where the plot's going with this. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really know where they're doing. That's why I knocked it a star because I didn't understand where they were going with it. Uh, but I definitely thought they did a really good job of creating interest in what they were going to ha have happen with this like really weird, creepy situation. Um and with the two creepy characters, I'm like, okay, well, who's the one that's the one <laughs> that we're looking out for? So I don't even know which one's the main character yet. Um, it seemed like they were going to bounce back again to the first one that they introduced um, in the next section. I just, I, it ended, like, with uh, the end of that chapter on one page and, like, the beginning of the next one on the other page. So my eyes immediately switched to the other one and read, like, the first sentence. And it showed, like, somebody going over to the other character again. So I don't really know what's happening with that. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, that's one. So then this next one is Mind Games. It's by Shanna Silver. And I gave this one five stars. This one comes out on August 27th. This one's a sci-fi read. And um, it's about... Basically, the idea of this one is um, it's set in a school... It's definitely set in, like, a, um, either in the future or in an alternate, like, reality where basically technology is much more advanced than it is now, and they have the capability to, um, there's, like, computer chips. Somehow their brains are synced up to, like, the cloud, and so they can save their memories as, like, a computer file, and they can access those files, and so the main character is able to hack these files and um, goes through and helps uh, people like cheat on homework assignments that way by studying when they didn't really study. They find like the file of somebody who did study and then they can import them into the other person's brain. Basically just like copying the memory files so they know the answers. Um, so it's like they've studied even though they didn't. Which is a really interesting thing and like a weird way to use that power. Like you would think if you could copy memories you wouldn't necessarily just be like cheating on homework. But okay, it's it's an interesting idea. Um, but then 
the, I don't know if this is, I think this is written, yeah, this is written on the back of the book. Um, I don't read the descriptions of books before I read them. So um, I didn't know that this was going to be happening, but the main character uh, finds out that sh some of her memories are missing. And not just mini memories, like really important memories are missing. Like she has lost all of her memory of one of her classmates. Um, and because she's like, she doesn't realize that she's lost any of these memories until she asks her friend who the new kid is. And her friend's like, you're kidding, right? And like laughs because she thinks it's a joke. And then she, when she realizes it's not a joke, she's like, okay, what's going on? Um, and so that's basically what happens the whole first chapter is um, you see like the trading of memories, you see finding out that the memories have been deleted and finding out that that classmate also is missing memories and um, then they're going to go look into it. And that's where it leaves you. And I am definitely interested in this one. This one's probably one of like my most anticipated of the ones that I read. Um, it's definitely up there at the top and it is amazing and I cannot wait to read that more of that one. <laughs> Um, so then the last book I've got for you is um, Crown of Coral and Pearl. This one is by Mara Rutherford. And it I rated this one five stars. So this one um, comes out on August 27th. So the plot of this one wasn't quite set up yet. So I don't quite understand where they're going with it exactly. I mean, it was pretty set up. Like you understand what some of the conflicts are going to be, but not all of them just yet. Like a lot of, you can tell that there's going to be more plot to come and it hasn't been set up yet. Um, so you can feel like the beginning seeds of the plot in the first chapter, but I think once you get into chapter two is where you're really going to get to the, to the main event. <laughs> so chapter one is just setting up the idea that there's two sisters. We've got Coral and Pearl and um that they they're different personalities and um how one of them is likely to be chosen as the most beautiful girl in their community um and the most beautiful girl um marries the prince so basically it's about that the choosing ceremony doesn't happen in chapter one which is why i'm saying the plot's not quite set up yet um i think that once the choosing ceremony happens that's when you're really going to get to like the heart of the like the meat of what's ha gonna happen. Um, so that's why I'm saying it's not quite set up. I gave it five stars though, so I'm not faulting it for not being set up because you know where it's gonna happen. You know it's coming soon <laughs> because it happens, um, the plot of this is the day before the choosing ceremony. So chapter one is the day before. Um, and then the day, I it's the day is close to ending by the end of the first chapter. So I believe chapter two will start on choosing ceremony. So I'm very excited to read more of this one. It sounds really, really good. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's supposed to be a little mermaid retelling. They're not mermaids. So I'm guessing not. Um, but whenever I see like a, I don't know, like a watery story <laughs> where there's a prince that's going to get married and choosing like a beautiful, I always wonder like, is it supposed to be little mermaidy? But I'm like, okay, well, probably not. But they don't live on land, and that's why they really want to be chosen. Um, well, kind of. There's mixed feelings on being chosen, but it's a good thing for their family if they're chosen. So that's if they're chosen, they get to live on land with the royalty and a uh, different community that kind of um, controls their community. They don't. They don't really have very many resources because they live on the water. I'm not really sure how they live on the water. I think they're like. Some sort of like maybe hook together boats or something. I don't I don't quite understand. Um, I don't have a mind's eye picture of what's going on with this yet. But I'm thinking I probably will soon. There might be a map. Maybe there's a map in there that I should be looking at. Um, so that's all of the books that I got and read. So I'm just going to quickly go through and talk about what my favorite ones were. Um, so that way you know which ones I think are going to be like the best of the bunch. So I definitely think House of Salt and Sorrows is at the top of my list, um, but not number one for me. For me, number one is definitely going to be um, this one right here, Mind Games. This one is number one to me. Um, I think this one is probably going to be my favorite of the group. I really, really love the concept. I think it's really interesting and it's kind of right up my alley, which definitely helps. So that one's definitely number one to me. House of Salt and Sorrows is kind of tied with Crown of Coral and Pearls. 
or crown and curl and pearl, sorry, there's no S at the end. Um, but both of those definitely, all three are five stars for me so far, and I think that they're going to end at five stars as well. I'm really enjoying all three of those books. So yeah, those three I think are going to be my top books. After that, maybe probably this one next. This one's The Surface Breaks. Um, this one, I gave it four stars. This one I think was going to be my next favorite. And then after that, I can't really tell which ones of the rest are going to be my favorite. Uh, or not my favorite, but my favorite of this group. I would say probably my least favorite is definitely probably maybe Boss Up in 100 Days of Sunlight. But I do think 100 Days of Sunlight might redeem itself. So I think this one's my least favorite of all of the books that I that I read so far and I feel bad because I know that its target audience probably will really enjoy it but I think they did a poor job of marketing towards their target audience because I read the back and it doesn't say anything about religion and I think that that's definitely something they should include because there are a lot of people that don't have the same religion as this person and or who just aren't interested in reading a religious book and I think that they really should mention that in there that that's what that's gonna be so that way people know that if it's not their thing to not go for it and a lot of people that is their thing and they only want to go for that or they especially want to go for that so I think that they should have made sure to put that on there so that those people who are really interested in that could go for it um so yeah that's where I'm gonna leave you guys today uh I'll have the September one uh, with the, all the September arcs that I got, and I definitely got more for September, so I'm gonna try to do a better job of staying, like, doing a shorter time talking about each book next time, because I think I took way too long on each book this time, so I need to, like, cut it down a little bit, but let me know what you think, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you plan on getting any of them, if they sound good to you, um, yeah, let me know in the comment section below if that's anything you're interested in uh, for any of these books, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!